list. Uh, we have Patrick, Tony Gale, Shui, Tim and Duck. Um, okay, uh, but I did saw uh, Samuel at one topic in today's agenda. Uh, anyway, uh, let's get started. Let me share the screen. Here's my screen. Yep. Okay. Uh, today we have five topics. Um, and uh, I think uh, because uh, uh, Zach can only join in the first uh, 30 minutes, so I put uh, uh, the directory structure and version controlling this topic uh, uh, before uh, Pradesh, your topic. Hope that is OK for you. Yeah, that's fine. OK, uh, let's get started for the first topic. Uh, Feynman or Zach, uh, you can start. Yeah, maybe I can start to introduce a little bit backgrounds around this topic. And then I think, uh, Zach, you can chime in. Yeah, sure, not a problem. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Zach. I know it's quite late for your time zone this time. Um, no, it, it, it's OK. I appreciate you all putting this to the top. That's very kind of you. Thank you. Yeah. So you could you open the link around the new directory structure and version control. Actually, as you may know that we are currently working on the refactoring, the layout, and the documentation directory of the Notary project documentation. So um, Roslyn is our mentee who is working on uh, this pull request. So we are currently refactoring uh, the documentation directory structure, but we have different opinions um, on this new directory structure. So could you scroll down? And I think we can start from the latest uh, comment that Zach and I had on this on this thread. Yeah. Yeah, I'd stop at that comment. Would you be okay with that, Feynman? Yeah, I think uh, that's okay. So Kendall, I think we have two problems or two questions that we need to have consensus on them. The first question is the uh, version control. As you know that uh, we are very close to the first stable release of um, notary, notary project, or we say notation. Uh, I think uh, it's time to consider in introducing the version control, but I'm thinking uh, if, we, if we should introduce version control until we have V2 release, or we should start introducing version control from V1.0? This is a question that we need to consider since um, Shui mentioned that notation as a security project, we should always support the latest version of the doc and also provide um, the latest version for users. Um, but uh, it's, it's still, I think this can still be discussed. And uh, um, I also want to hear uh, experience from opinions from Zach as you have quite experience in documentation management. Sure. I Thank think, you, Feynman. Yeah. Yeah. I think so we can have a consensus on the version control, and then we can move to the new directory structure. Sure. Um, before we get started, is there any questions? Because I'm gonna kind of I'm gonna go into what I think the crux of the issue is, but I want to make sure that everyone feels like they have the groundwork for where we're going. Yeah, I think you can start from your opinion or the comment you list here. Sure. So the the crux of the issue that I feel like is um, that's manifesting itself in the versions that we're talking about. So the, the versioned site of the docs. So like you can see in the first set of URLs versus the second set of URLs. Um, and that also manifests itself um, in how the directory structure is laid out. Um, they're, they're, they're kind of part of the same problem, which is uh, the notary 
project is an umbrella of multiple things. Inclusive of that is notation, which is a CLI, as everyone knows. Then there's also the notation go live. There's notation go and notation core, which are additional libraries. Um, the specs as well, though that's not super relevant to this conversation, but um, all of those things under the umbrella project have independent versions that are unrelated to each other and can be independently iterated. So version 1.1 of the notation CLI release doesn't necessarily equate to version 1.1 of either one of the Go libraries and vice versa, um, which is fine. Like I'm not, I'm not objecting to that approach. Um, and I believe we've discussed that a system style release where all versions are just the same for every release, regardless of how much work is done uh, on the individual umbrella projects, there did not seem to be any interest in that, or that didn't seem to be the direction that the team wanted to head. Um, Feynman and Yi, is that correct? I think that's correct. And uh, each sub project has its own versioning strategy and uh, uh, they are in, in, they have its own independent versioning control. That's the fact. But right now, I think Notation, Notation Go and Coco have the same uh, versioning in this release. I mean, V1.0, but after that, I think uh, the notation colon libraries will have different, we have their in, independent versioning strategy after this release. Okay, thank you. Uh, um, that, that, that's actually good to know for context. So where we start to run into issues is we have one doc site for everything. And there's some subtlety to that. Like for instance, I think the specs are going to the, the notary specification is going to be housed in the GitHub repo, not on this website. Um, but the documentation that we currently have is under notaryproject.dev. That is the URL. Um, and then the docs directory. And then right now, there's no version number. It just goes right to the content URLs. And in this documentation site, we have documentation that is an overview of the notation project proper. So of everything, we have how to do things with notation. So you've got you know the notary project umbrella overview. You've got the how tos and quick starts tutorials. All of that uses exclusively notation, and then very hopefully shortly after 1.0, there'll be subsequent developer documentation about how to use the libraries to develop against them. So whether it's re like releasing an alternative CLI, whether it's directly integrating the notary project into your code base, what have you. Um, that's the desired end state. Um, and so I'm, I'm stopping here. Is everybody on the same page? This is what everybody wants as of right now, correct? Yeah, I think so. Those yeah. concerns are, are correct. Yeah. Toddy, were you going to say something? Yeah, I, uh, so I had a little bit different opinion on the kind of the uh, information architecture. Uh, I think uh, we chatted with you, Zach, uh, in, on chat about that, about having kind of a uh, top level, which is notary project with all the over overview concepts and so on. And after that, splitting it into like users documentation and developers documentation. Right. We had yeah. a conversation on, on like use cases, but I'm just saying in general, we have content that covers multiple projects under the umbrella of the notary project, regardless of what directory structure and layout is. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm trying to level set and just get basics here so that we're all on the same page talking. So um, actually, Yi, can you scroll up to show the first two sets of bullets there? Uh, yeah, perfect. Okay. So there are 
a couple of different approaches that we had to dealing with this because you can't, because there's no system release and there's no constant um, version of the release for notation and the Go libraries as of right now and whatever future things that you wanted to add, um, you have to, there, there has to be either some accounting or at least some recognition, or we have to figure out some way around this idea that there are different version numbers. One approach would be to just have one version number at the top because the majority of the content is related to notation, like 80 to 90% of the content. The only yeah. things that are unrelated to notation are the overview, which is just general notary project and any developer documentation targeted at the libraries. Everything else is pretty notation specific. Um, there may be some FAQ or troubleshooting content at the upper notary level, but again, that's further down the line and I'm not, we're not gonna really get into those. We're just accounting for sort of what we know today is. If we take the approach of, hey, let's just have one version number for the whole site, it really simplifies things. There's a lot of open source projects like such as Helm, you have one version number at the root of the project. Um, you set up a redirect so that if there's no version number, it just goes to the latest one. Um, you can have an extremely simplified directory structure, which again, we'll address later, um, but it allows, a little, it allows a little bit more of a straightforward concept, which I think is good. It also allows us to have a good branching strategy in the GitHub repository to make things a little bit easier and backport changes if we need to. I completely recognize this. I think it would be way easier to work in. The downside to this approach, which has been sort of a major sticking point, has been when you get to say the bottom bullet point in both of the lists. So for example, the Go library, it doesn't have to be called that, but it's the developer documentation developing against the Go library. In the URL, the version number that is there has no relation whatsoever to the version number of the Go library. It's the version number of notation. So there is a really big disconnect between what users are seeing in that URL and what they're going to. And I think Feynman brings up a reasonable point, which is there's an exists a possibility that there's not gonna be a lot of changes happening here. Users will adapt. It could simplify things. The downside is if that's not the case, or maybe let's say you all are developing the, here's an example, okay? Let's say you all are rapidly iterating the notation CLI and in six, 12, 18 months, the URLs now have a 1.7 in them. And then somebody wants to start developing against the API, but the API or the libraries, I'm sorry, it's not an API, the libraries are at 1.1. So you may have a user coming in reading what they think is the 1.7 documentation for the Go library. And then when they go to the actual repo to download the library, they're gonna see version 1.1 and they're gonna be like, oh, like where's version 1.7? So it makes, so that is, in my opinion, that's a pretty big problem. There's ways around it. One of them involves changing the directory structure which introduces a separate set of complications that I'm willing to discuss and will completely yield makes things harder. Um, that's one approach to it, which we've talked about in this thread pretty heavily. The other workaround is um, if we're doing developer documentation, it goes in a different location. We can keep anything that's, we basically make this documentation website um, notation specific other than high level notary project content that is ostensibly versionless. Okay, those would be the two workarounds to this problem that I think are reasonable workarounds to this issue. Um, so I will pause there. I know I kind of threw a lot out there. Questions or does anybody want to talk about anything I said? <laughs> Uh, Sorry, Todd. my dog's barking. <laughs> yeah, so maybe Toddy, you first. 
Yeah, so Zach, when you say it goes in a completely different directory, do you mean different directory in the same GitHub repo, or do we need to create a completely different GitHub repo for that? So the I can't hear you. So yeah, sorry about that. No, my dog was barking, and I didn't want you guys to get an earful. Um, so the first approach that I talked about with a different directory structure. It's just adding a directory to the existing content repo. It's actually, it's in the proposed PR that you're looking at right now. It's reorienting the content in a different directory layout, does not require a separate GitHub repo. Um, but what it does introduce is it introduces a notation directory that you can version notation content in. And then separately, you have a developer directory that you can then create versioned content for go library go core library whatever other developer documentation you want that is the directory approach that introduces different sets of complications the second approach that i talked about would be instead basically creating the developer content in markdown files my idea would be housing them in the uh github the existing github repos for the libraries so instead of and then linking to it from the main content site it's a it's less clean, but it does get rid of the problem of multiple projects with different uh, versions under the same umbrella having to deal with this version problem. Did that address your question? Yeah, I uh, and my other question was so this is because we can like Netify cannot figure out a way that let's say if we tag the actually that's not gonna work yeah okay that answers my question yeah it's the crux of the problem is it's hard to have multiple url multiple versions in the url like that that's the problem so Feynman, go ahead yeah um i prefer the second workaround or with the second approach that that you mentioned here so uh as you know that um most of the content around the notation specific um, tool and the country we don't have another client tour uh, which is similar to notation. And uh, all of those, most of the sub projects are run notation such as notation GitHub actions, uh, plugins, uh, except for the notation Go libraries, right? But you can, but as you can see that notation libraries has its own old dog see this go dog sorry uh, and uh, you could you scroll down to the latest comment i have a link uh related to the yeah thing uh hang out here so uh which is so could you open the go dog link i have mentioned in this comment yeah as you can find um notation go libraries have have their own versioning control and uh, different versions of go doc of the library docs can be found here so i think maintaining those development guide and also the uh, library guide on the go doc and also in the uh, library github repo might be a good strategy and uh, on the documentation side we only link we only link um related library docs the related document development documentation from the website to the library github repo so in this way we can uh, distinguish different versions from notation and the current website the current documentation site only focus on the notation at this moment thank you i i'm i am comfortable with that approach um while we're on there there's one call out i want to make e can you go back to the the previous tab thank you um if you look at the urls the only call out i'm going to make now and again i can get around this but i i can i can personally look past this and i'm okay with it but i want to be transparent about this we are saying this is the notary project documentation and we're pretty much doing notation. I'm okay with this 
but I want to make sure that this is explicitly called out and everybody else is okay with it. For example, like isn't, I believe on the doc site, notary is in the upper left-hand corner, not notation. And again, I understand that notation is the primary manifestation that users have right now to interact with notary signatures on artifacts. And if everybody, if everyone is okay with that mild disconnect, then I am comfortable with it. So I open it up. Does anybody have major concerns about that or think that's non-negotiable? Um, the, that, uh, uh, the spec sorry, go ahead. sorry, go ahead. Yes, Sajay, please, you go first. Yeah, the overview on the spec should not call out notation. That should be the front landing and center of what the notary project is. Notation is a reference implementation that is done by this project should be something that we should make clear. Okay, so just to reflect my understanding of what you said, you don't object to this necessarily so long as it's made explicitly clear on when you hit the main docs that what we are saying is a reference implement or is a implementation of a spec. Here's a link to the spec. Is that correct? Yes. That's the way I've seen it. I've also seen it as a 1.2 of the spec and not a 1.2 of notation. Honestly speaking, that's probably my view because I deal with a lot of the specs repo in multiple places. But I think the 1.0 means that we will have a 1.0 of the spec and we will have a 1.0 of notation. Uh, whether we make that a system release like what Kubernetes does, like Kubernetes 1.27, actually has client libraries that are of different versions. Like they have client libraries for API machinery that is in 0.29 alpha. Um, that's up to us to decide whether notation will, what you say, dr drift from the specification version. Um, and maybe we would do a spec 1.1 and notation version 2.0 because the CLI might fully break. I think that's a bridge we'll have to cross at some point. That, that's been my thinking all along. Like, I think that, the fact that we have mixed the concept of the notation client library version is um, is easy to reason with in the first release, but that's not going to be the case going forward. Okay, I think those are fair points and um, call outs, and I think we can. I think moving forward with that workaround, I think we can iterate and mold it to continue to adapt, or at least it sets us up best to iterate and adapt without really painting ourselves in a corner. Would you agree with that, Sajay? Yeah, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with this because I'm not seeing the distinction very clear, but it's also been pretty clear in my head and we need to sort that out. Uh, Toddy? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure I understood your proposal. So what can you explain again? You're proposing that we use the spec version us. No, we, I'm, I'm, I'm saying I, I'm interpreting the 1.0 as a combined release of the spec and the CLI. It's almost like a system release because everything is packaged together in 1.0. It's easy. We will mm -hmm. have to discuss if we rev the spec, the CLI might become a 2.0, right? We might do a minor increase increment in the spec to a 1.1. Uh, like what OCI is doing, but Aura has moved to like 2.0. And that drift will happen. And at that point in time, we have to decide whether we go with notation 1.1 or docs 2.0. Uh, so the way I've been thinking about this is that 1.0 is a full set, right? Like you have the plugin, you have the specification, you have the CLI, so it's a clean start. But the moment the spec starts revving, we'll have to come across and decide whether 1.1 will be a definition of what the system is, which is I might add, I might make cozy the default, or I might have a new attachment format or something like that. And then notation might have to have, either it can be a 1.1 or it might be a breaking change with a 2.0. We have to decide that at that point. So what is going to be a 1.1 and 2.0 story is, is still unclear, is what I'm saying. 
Yeah, the, the thing is that in all the cases, I see those things diverging and each one of them having a separate version, right? Yes. And I'm kind of looking at what Pritesh posted in the chat. And uh, the question is, do we even need to have a version in the in the URL? Or do we even need to version those things? Uh, uh, I like the version because we can choose that as what notary project version stands for because right now we have the same problem in image spec right like image spec is 1.1 distribution is 1.2 and people can't reason with the two right so i think the project having a single version helps people think about it and talk about it the question is what that 1.1 or 2.2 means is is a system release kind of a thing like what kubernetes does in the end is i think is a good model uh but for 1.0 i have no concerns whether the version is there or not I think the version being there is good because later. So in Kubernetes, do they, in Kubernetes, do they list all the versions of sub projects they have to get version 12 refers to different. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I kind of was going through the client library references. They just call out the respective versions. They don't uh, mix up the client library implementations with the system version. But Kubernetes is a different model. Uh, I think Zach mentioned that before. I like what is here. Like you have a 1.0. It's a clean 1.0. It's indirectly pinning to both the spec and the and the CLI the way I see it. Uh, but if we diverge, we'll have to come across this discussion again. But for unblocking now, I think we should. I'm, I'm okay with the versions as it is. And then I think... Yi, you've been very patiently waiting with your question. What was your question? Yeah, I think uh, <laughs> Sajay talked about uh, uh, something that I, I want to talk about. It's, I, I'm thinking that's what we can do for now for our uh, notation first release because it is uh, it, it comes uh, clean because it's the first uh, stable burden, right? Including specification, CLI, and the library. It's, uh, it's pretty much clean, but... Uh, but uh, uh, those library specifications, as uh, Sajay mentioned, it will go different directions later. So I'm thinking that, uh, uh, and also we, we have the time, we, we already have 30 minutes. Uh, I'm thinking uh, we can first align what we can do for our first uh, notation V1 release. Then we can continue the discussion later to figure out what's the best way that we can, uh, we can do it for the documentation later. Thank you, Yi. I appreciate that. Uh, Feynman, you got your hand up. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think uh, we don't have too much conflicts with the um, Notary Project uh, spec. As you know, that uh, Notary Project specification, the versioning control of that repo may uh, step beyond the notation CLI project. Uh, and uh, I think we can state on the documentation side that notation is an implementation of which version of the spec and which version of the notation go library. But we still keep the documentation side um, primary, primarily focus, focusing on notation itself, as uh, at this moment, we only have the notation client tool and the most of con content are around notation. So, and uh, I think uh, currently, most of the uh, all of those spec are still maintaining in a single, in a separate repository, and it's it doesn't uh, coupled with the documentation side. So on the documentation side, we only link the necessary content to related link to related places such as the spec repo, and we don't uh, remain maintain those content on the documentation side. Um, that didn't make sense, um, Zach? Yeah, that, that makes sense. And so, yeah, just to reiterate, the specific things we're talking about would be like the spec documentation, as well as any developer-based documentation for libraries um, outside of uh, for the two libraries at the current moment. Um, so it's all, as he said, it's pretty much notation-based and then any high-level overview content of the notation project that um, is kind of versionless. Somebody else is going to say something. 
Uh, Toddy, go ahead. Yeah, I will, I will disagree a little bit with uh, this. Um, the reason that actually most of our documentation is notation based is because that's what we have written so far. Uh, we are already getting questions how to implement things without notation and notation libraries. And the lack of documentation should not actually steer our decision to really make decision for the versioning based on what we release as notation. So I like what actually Sajay is saying. So uh, we have notary project uh, like as overall project versioning and uh, we should make sure that actually similar to, to what Kubernetes uh, has is like if we say let's say notary project version 1.0 that includes version 1.0 of the spec, version 1.0 of notation, version 1.0 of this library, version 1.0 of that library. And um, next time if we kind of ref something, uh, maybe we can actually change the version of the overall project. Uh, that's what I understand Sajay is proposing, but once again, I I think we are making mistake if we tie everything to the notation version. That's kind of my opinion. The reason being is that notation is just a CLI, right? Uh, we should concentrate on, uh, especially around the developer documentation, to explain how people can e implement the signatures in any language not only in Go, because we already have .NET uh, C-sharp requests or .NET, we have Java requests and we have Python requests. And none of those actually users can use anything that we describe for notation or notation libraries. Pritesh, go ahead. Since this, since this discussion took more than 30 minutes, how about we not add a version and we decide version when we have to do that, I mean, we'll just cross the bridge when it comes to it. And for time being, just don't add a version. And in future, if you want to add a version, we can always redirect. We can always get slash v1 and our default URL will be with the latest version, like some other project does that. The default URL always points to the latest one, and then you maintain this using the versioning. Really, don't solve the problem when we don't have it right now, and defer the future when we'll have the problem. Um, because we uh we, we only have twenty five minutes, so I have to uh <laughs> interrupt the discussions. Can we continue the discussion offline in the in the Stack channel? Because we didn't reach agreement yet. I'm hoping to do it. Um. We can, I think we're going to need to solve some of this synchronously, or at least come to a consensus synchronously. So I don't know if this is continued on the Thursday slash Friday community call, or if this is on next week's community call, or however the intervals are. But um, I'm fine with, I'm personally fine with continuing this in Slack so that others on the agenda can get through. But I think the final, like we're going to need to, I think we need to review this synchronously and everybody needs to agree. Mm -hmm on a meeting like this. Um, yeah. Is that okay with everybody? Sounds good. Yes. good. Yeah. And I believe cool. this will not impact or unblock notation v1 release. No, uh, uh, no I, I, I don't think it's fair to block the release of the CLI on the docs. I, I think no. it's important to yeah. go ahead, you sorry. Yeah, I don't think it's will block uh the notation we one release. Uh but one uh one thing is uh, related is we needed to uh update the the project overview to make it clear the notary project is the uh, overall so, organization. Yeah. So so quick quick question. The only point that I'm seeing is whether you want to have a version or not. Can we work on skipping the version out for now, make the check-in with the restructure and then add the version as a follow-up and we can discuss that on Slack. Is that possible? Or does it not, change the whole thing? 
So the problem that so the problem that we were trying to fix in as part of the restructure was having a dedicated subdirectory for note for notation specific content separate from developer against the library specific content. They all had their own subdirectories, so they could all be independently versioned since um, you know since they had to exist underneath the same site. That was what was introduced into the refactor. If um, I mean, we can go back against some of those changes and do some rearranging and put everything back sort of at a top level again um, and merge the refactor, I guess that would that would unblock the refactor. But if we have to refactor it again due to like versioning or however we're going to handle it, it's going to be another refactor of the URLs post 1.0. And as long as everyone 1.0 of the notation release, let me be specific. So if, if people are okay with that, I don't love the idea, but it's not the end of the world, I guess. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not super, I'll be very honest. I'm ambivalent about the version structure right now because I don't know how it's going to show up, but the content needs to be updated is kind of where my priority is so that we call out notary project, we call out notation, we, we kind of keep the verbiage correctly. Does this PR have re rewriting of the docs or is it only about directory structure? Sorry, I'm if I'm asking. It's primarily directory structure. Um, okay. but they're gonna she's gonna need to rework the PR to go back and restore things how they were initially because she introduced changes to account for this multiple version issue um, that we've been talking about. I believe that's the current state of things. So there will there needs to be an additional some additional work here hopefully it's not too long but if everyone is comfortable with saying no version for right now and we just kind of go back to uh not having a, a separate notation subdirectory um we can refat finish this pr and then merge a bunch of other changes and then um you know solve this as soon as we can solve this okay so i heard pratish kind of echo that Toddy mentioned no versions. I'm on the fence. I think, it, I mean, again, I'm not a maintainer. I should be qualifying that. I'm just giving my input here. So Pratesh and Toddy are probably, and, and Feynman might be the ones who probably need to kind of like weigh in on this. Uh, and anybody else on the call, uh, if you can at least comment on that, maybe we can make a decision just to kind of like unblock at this point. But Thursday, we can talk about this again. Um, we're not dropping the ball on this. We're just kind of unblocking at this point. Yeah, I'm fine. This just has to be sorted out before the next release of notation. So before whatever subsequent release of notation after 1.0.0, like yes. I really need this really needs to get sorted out before yes, that. I, I understand. I'm passionate about yeah. this too to get the versions in. But um, but Pratesh, Toddy, you folks, I'm hearing no versions for now. Either either you comment on the issue and just say we'll follow up, or is that okay? Yeah, I'm fine with no version for now. And when we we will cross the bridge when we get to it. Right now we don't have anything apart from one dot so yeah. I think so. Currently all of those uh, primary sub projects are 1.0. We don't have different versions for um, libraries, spec, and CLI. I think we can keep the same version at this moment. Yeah, uh, I think let's continue this discussion and also yeah. in offline, maybe we can write some examples so that everyone can understand. But for now, we don't have, uh, we don't introduce any version. And uh, and uh, I think this is okay because for notation V1, the upcoming uh, release, we have all the specs, uh, CLI library, the, the, the latest version, I think is fine for now. But we definitely need to uh, figure out later. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so let's move on to the other topics. And thanks a lot, Doug, for staying uh, long in the day. Thank you, Doug. Not a problem. Thanks for giving me the extra time, everybody. Have a nice evening or day in China, too. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye. Uh, let's move on and let's be quick so uh pradesh 
Uh, Patrick, do you want to talk about this since you did most of the work here? Uh, so, sorry. Uh, like I'm asking, do, does Patrick want to talk about it as he did most of the work here? So this is about uh, arbitrary file signing and verification. Uh, e, could you uh, open the link? Uh, this one? Yeah, so this is my design for uh, signing and verifying an arbitrary file. Uh, I guess uh, many of you have already uh, left comments in the design. I have replied them. And uh, I think Pritesh has some questions uh, at the very bottom of the doc. So, uh, right now, what we have in the doc is, uh, I can put in here, sorry, yeah. Uh, what we have right now is we are supporting signing arbitrary data which means notation will take a random data or a file as an input or even a, from a CDIN and it will sign that. But this misses a major use case where let's say my data is really big, it's in GBs. For example, I have a game or anything I want to sign. Then what I have user has to do is like usually uh, anything big builds on the build machine and the signing would be usually be a separate service, a separate operation there. If user has to sign it, either they will have to copy that big file to the signing server and then sign it, which is suboptimal because you have to move a GBs of data there. So what I am proposing here is we also support signing of pre-calculated hashes, which is what it basically means is, let's say if you have to sign a big file, what a user can do is a user can calculate the hash locally of that file and then send that hash to notation and notation will sign those hashes. Basically what it means is notation won't rehash them, notation will take that hash directly and sign them. Does this make sense? Like, uh, uh, if I want, I can go into further, I can explain this in further more details. Uh, Sajay, please. Hey, um, uh, Pratish, I was just curious, like, did, did you put this on the agenda? Yes, I did. Okay. Uh, all right. So we just want to make sure that we don't drop off on any of the release thing because that's kind of been blocked yeah. since last week, right? So uh, if you want, we can get into this or... Um, but just make sure that we have some time to kind of like follow up on any release blocking issues because I think Tori is also kind of like looking for that. Yeah, I'll just take one, one, one yeah, more minute. Sounds good. Sounds like, good. Sorry, just anyone, like, yeah, anyone else opposing? Like, is there any major objection for this? Basically, what I'm proposing here is we can support the signing of raw data also, and as well as the signing of the hashes, pre-computed hashes. Uh, Shui, please. Uh, yes, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is, what's the real scenario for that? Uh, is that, uh, I mean, uh, signing from a very big file from a remote machine is really a real scenario or not? That's the first question. The second question is uh, why we are resigning the digest, why we are not resigning a descriptor. So basically a, disp a descriptor contains oh. the digest, the size, and also the, me uh, the media type. So this is a real world scenario. Usually you don't want to move the big artifacts, at least for games I have known that, games are in GB. And for example, SignTool also supports this. In SignTool, if you're signing a big app, you calculate the digest locally and then you sign it at digest. Like basically SignTool returns your digest and then you take your digest and sign it remotely. So like signing a big file is a real world scenario here. So you don't want to sign a transfer just one GB of data from build server to your signed server so that you can just sign with that. 
So there's a question that the sign content is in the remote. That means it is kind of stored not in the sign machine. That means it can be an artifact. Then why we just not sign the artifact? If we sign the artifact, it's just a manifest. Oh, it's, it's not it's outside the container. If, for example, if the data is stored somewhere in file system or somewhere else, not in the registries. So when we remember arbitrary data, it was data not stored in the registries. It can it can be used for signing any other data. Yeah, uh, I, I, uh, and I think I need uh, more input for others. And the, for the third question is, uh, uh, how about we use a descriptor instead of just a digest? We can get later to that, but yes, I agree. Let's let's assume that we can use descriptor, but do we want to support signing of pre-computed digest, not taking complete content? I think the signing of the descriptor is the digest only. So that that kind of gives you the the the, the language of the descriptor might seem a little uh, registry specific, but technically, what we're saying is. Size digest and media type is probably the only thing we need to kind of sign, and then we can take it from there. So I don't see a reason why we would not support doing that because that's what notation does today anyway. Yeah, like so. We, uh, I think uh, I just I will just say one more, one more minute in uh, notation right now. Yes, it takes like, but the design which it talks about assigning RBA data com will compute the digest and then sign it, and basically. We would notation will be calculating the digest out of the file which we are trying to send or data we are trying to sign. And I won't just want to move that out. Um, and I think sorry, yeah. I, <laughs> I won't take much time. I will give you back. Like yeah, we can continue this in Slack, but I just wanted to bring the topic up. Yeah. I think this one we also need a, a further discussion on it. So uh, yeah, let's uh, let's move on to address the notation we want issue. Okay. Uh, so we have 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, last week, uh, as you uh, all know that we have uh, this, uh, let me open this one. Uh, we have the proposal from Toddy. Uh, yeah, we have the proposal from Toddy that we need to fix some naming uh, branding issues before we, uh, do the notation we want release and I made a summary of the all the PRs we have created and also the issue for uh, vote for the uh, renaming uh, specifically. So I uh, split those PRs into two category. Uh, the first category is the issue and the PRs we need to be complete before notation V1 release. This including renaming notary project to specification, uh, the, the overall uh, .github readme file we need to merge and also for the notary project uh, that we need to uh, merge the renaming for the specification signature uh, including signatures and also other specifications and also update the readme so there are three PRs related to the uh, notary project and also for the notation pro uh, rep uh, repository, we needed to update the readme. And also for the websites, we needed to have the uh, FAQ or the glossary to explain the different uh, uh, terminology we used uh, for the uh, overall notary project. And also uh, we have another, I think we have another PR to update the uh, notary project overview for the for clarify the uh, terminology. So those, <laughs> yeah. Okay, can, do you want to go through each one and see where we are blocked? Uh, yeah, I want to firstly agree that uh, we need to have these PRs issues uh, completed before notation V1. And uh, uh, based on Todd's proposal, there are other PRs already created, but for different uh, repository and, uh, and also some proposals for the for archiving process, I think for those, we can do it uh, in parallel, but the, those PRs will not block the V1 release. So the, this is the first thing I want to align with all the, all the people here. Then we can go detail to each PRs and the issues. Uh, let me check the chat. Yeah, 
If all agree, let's firstly focus on all the issues PRs that we need to uh, complete them before notation v1 release. Okay. Uh, for can for the sorry, so can you repeat that? I didn't understand the last part. That what we can be done post launch. Uh, uh, which part? Uh, you, you said something about that follow that this task can be done post launch. Uh, yeah, there are other PRs uh, like renaming a notary repo to notary tough and also readme for other repository like uh, uh, notation actions, uh, notary. Uh, meeting notes, road, uh, roadmaps. For, for those readme file, we can review in parallel, uh, but the, those PRs will not block notation V1 release. And, and also we have the proposal for archiving uh, the tough repository. Uh, we need to have the process first, then we needed to uh, have the vote for it. Uh, so for those, uh, I don't think we'll block notation V1 release because uh, it's a different. Uh, we can do it in parallel and uh, those will not block V1 release. That's my point. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, we, we focus first uh, on the uh, overall view, uh, overview. Uh, on the GitHub and also the notary project renaming and also specification uh, changes according to the branding uh, proposals and the notation repo and also update the website for the terminology. So those are what we need to focus first uh, for the V1 release. Okay, so uh, let me check. We have two, two messages. Okay, not related to this. So let's uh, focus on the issues we need to solve for V1. So let's click the first one, the proposal for renaming. Uh, I think we need to, for this one, as Todi mentioned, we need to have the supermajority, I think a two third supermajority. So we need, uh, currently we have a one, two, three, four. Uh, we need two votes because currently Samuel is not um, a maintainer, a governance maintainer yet. So currently we have five votes. Uh, I think we need uh, uh, Pradesh and also additional one. Uh, sorry, uh, Todi. Sorry, what? Sorry, Todi, are you saying something? Uh, I, I see no. you are talking. No, no. No, no, okay. So maybe Pradesh, you can help to comment for this renaming no. proposal. And we also need a, a w additional one vote. So for this, uh, once Pradesh agreed with this proposal, we need a one more vote from the uh, from Steve or Justin or Nias. Second for uh, Nias. Yeah. And uh, yeah, once we have reached the super majority, we can take action because this renaming doesn't require PRs. Uh, so the admin of this uh, uh, not project organization can take action accordingly. Uh, okay, this is first one. The second one for the- So, so uh, he, just quick question on the previous one. Are you assigned to that issue to, to do the renaming? Uh, assigned to who? I mean, are, are you planning to make the change? Just uh, want yeah, to make I, sure that yeah. there's an owner. Uh, yeah, I can do that once okay. we okay. have the, yeah, we have the enough uh, votes. I will do that. Yeah, I can do that. I am the admin. Uh, then for the second one, read me. Uh, Todis. Uh, Sorry, on the previous.